house. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, Seth and uh, my mom and uh, Lisa's mom are in Savannah, Georgia today. Seth is at a, a baseball showcase. That's why he's not here. And I'm on the drums. So we're struggling a little bit, but we'll make it work. Amen. Amen. As long as the Holy Spirit's in the house, that's all that matters. Amen. And so um, <clears throat> I pray for them as they're, they'll be traveling later on today, coming back. Um, and uh, But uh, we want to get into the Word of God today. We welcome all the visitors here. If, uh, if you're a visitor, first time, second time. If you're second time, you're not a visitor. We just consider you home folk. And... Uh, and uh, Amen. If 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 you come back, you're cr you're really a crazy folk. Hallelujah. Because the crazy folk come back to this church and stay crazy for Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, let's get into the Word of God today. Um, I uh, being being Pentecost Sunday, I I, I wanted to deal uh, with. Um, this subject the Lord gave me, picking up the mantle of Pentecost, picking up the mantle of Pentecost, hallelujah. And uh, I want to look this this morning in 1 Kings chapter 19, and you might wonder why uh, we're not turning to Acts, but uh, I want you to see something in, in 1 Kings chapter 19, because there is a type and shadow of uh, Pentecost. Pentecost not being the denomination, but being the experience and the power, hallelujah. And we're going to get the stigma of the name of Pentecost off of it in this house so that when we hear Pentecost when we say Pentecost we're not thinking of the stigma that comes with it we're thinking of the power and the experience that comes with the person of the Holy Spirit how many believes there's a power and there's an experience that comes with the person of the Holy Spirit when he comes in and begins to feel you hallelujah how many is filled this morning filled hallelujah thank you jesus and y'all gonna have to help me this morning amen i want you to get in with me yeah. hallelujah i don't know how this is gonna go uh and i'm just gonna let the lord have his way this morning and i don't know what we're gonna say we'll say whatever the lord wants to say but if you're ready say i'm ready, I'm ready. all right hallelujah that's most of you the rest of you just have to catch up, or I don't know. We'll just leave you where you're at. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right, so you can drag them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can you can drag them. Hallelujah. All right, First Kings chapter 19 is where we're going to look. First Kings chapter 19. Uh, looking at verses 19 through 21, and we're going to see a, a picture here in the account of this relationship with the prophet Elijah and Elisha. Hallelujah. This prophet that is coming up in his place. We're going to see a type and shadow of Pentecost here that, that I want to talk to you about. First Kings chapter 19, verse 19, it says, So he departed thence. And found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again. For what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh uh, with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. And he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. We're talking about picking up the mantle of Pentecost. 
today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking for your anointing to take over. Think through our mind, God. Speak through our lips. We need you, God, to move in this house this morning through me as your servant, through me as your prophet, God, as your mouthpiece, and God, through the people as they receive. God, let this word come out what the way you want it to come out and let it fall on good ground this morning and give us supernatural ears and understanding in this house, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. 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 Here in this account that I just read to you, Elisha is a type of the church and Elijah is a type of Jesus. And prior to these verses that we read, Elijah is up on Mount Oreb. And the presence of the Lord comes to him there and meets him there. And God begins to give Elijah some instructions. He tells him to actually go and anoint three people, but one of them being Elisha. And he wants him to go anoint Elisha to be a prophet in his place. Hallelujah. Or in other words, to be a prophet that will... Uh, train under him and study under him and eventually take his place in the earth once he leaves and carry on his ministry. Hallelujah. And so we see that Elijah shows up here in the text that we read to the house of Elisha while Elisha is just minding his business. He's farming with the oxen and with his team of oxen. And while he's farming and plowing this ground, the prophet Elijah walks up and throws his mantle on Elisha. Now, the mantle uh, is, in that time, it was really a leather piece of material. And, and let me just do this. It's the best way I can show it. Uh, come here, uh, Grace. Hallelujah. Uh, the, the mantle, just stand right there. The mantle is a leathern piece of material, maybe, maybe about this big. I'm not sure. It's made out of some kind of animal skin. But it was, it was synonymous with the prophet. And so it's usually the way that you would identify a prophet when a man walked up into your town or into your city. If you didn't know what he looked like, you would see him with a leathern piece of girdle. Uh, I'm sorry, a leathern piece of material called a mantle. And he would either wear it uh, over his head like this, or he may be wearing it uh, around his waist. He may be wearing it around his waist like this. But either way, a, a prophet would be walking with this mantle. So whenever you've seen the mantle, you recognize that this is a prophet. The mantle represented the office of the prophet. It represented the anointing of the prophet. So when Elijah came to Elisha, and Elisha's minding his own business, he's plowing, he's doing his thing. He takes this, this mantle, and what he does, he doesn't even say anything. He just walks up to Elisha and just throws it over Elisha, probably like this. And so what this signified to Elisha was that, and he understood this, that when that mantle came on him, it was signifying God is calling me into the office of the prophet. In other words, he's, it signified to him that the anointing, the power, the, 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 the supernatural ability of the prophet, hallelujah, was coming on his life and he was getting ready to walk in that. Hallelujah. Go ahead. You can go ahead and sit down. And, and so here is Elisha, and I want you to get this picture because this is a type and shadow of Jesus and the church. Hallelujah. That... <clears throat> Without hesitation, when that mantle came on Elisha, Elisha stops everything he's doing. He stops the plowing. He stops the farming, stops everything he's doing. And he looks at Elijah and says, Elijah, wait a minute. Don't go nowhere. Let me say goodbye to my family. Let me kiss them goodbye. And I'm going to come after you. And that's what we see with Elisha. Elisha, once he 
recognizes the call of the prophet on his life and when he recognizes that what's on Elijah is getting ready to come on him he stops everything he leaves everything the Bible says he took the oxen he was plowing with he took the instruments that he was using to plow with the oxen he used those instruments for wood for a fire and he sacrificed the oxen and he burned up the instruments why because he was saying I'm never going back to this life again him, I'm going to chase after the anointing that came on me today. I'm going to chase after the mantle that fell on my life today. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is a picture of Jesus and the church. Holy Ghost, help me today because I want you to see what God, I don't have nothing very profound for you today. I just got something that will hopefully encourage us today because we see the same thing happening in the ministry of Jesus. Remember, Jesus walks up to a bunch of fishermen that's fishing, hallelujah, and they ain't caught no fish all night and he asks if he can use their boat and they say sure go ahead use my boat he uses their boat he preaches off of that boat he uses it like a pulpit to elevate himself because they didn't have PA systems back then and he's preaching to multitudes of people and then he turns around and he tells him he says I know you ain't caught nothing but go ahead and launch out into the deep and you're going to get a great uh, catch of fish and and Peter said Lord we caught we, we fished all night and we ain't caught nothing we, we but nevertheless at your word will we'll launch out and the Bible says they launched out into the deep and, and they brought in a catch of fish that was starting to sink the boats and Peter recognized the anointing on this man Peter recognized that this is the Messiah Peter recognized that this was the one that is to come and, and, and restore the kingdom back to Israel and Jesus looked at Peter and said Peter drop your nets because uh, you've been fishing for fish but I'm going to make you fishers of men hallelujah come on and so here we see that like Elisha who drops everything and goes after Elijah and begins to chase that mantle that fell on him and begins to chase that anointing and begins to chase that power that when Jesus showed up to the, to the disciples uh, who were fishermen, they were tax collectors, uh, we see them dropping everything and going after Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, there's something about this anointing that when you catch it, when it touches you, it'll shift everything in your life. Woo, hallelujah. I'm saying to you, you can go to dry, dead churches where they're going through the motions and trying to get in at a certain time and out at a certain time and they don't have any moving of the Holy Spirit. You'll go to those churches the one way and walk out the same way. But I'm telling you, when you encounter the power of God, when you encounter the Holy Ghost, when you encounter the presence of Jesus, hallelujah, you can't leave the same way. Somebody say, it'll cause you to drop things it'll cause you to walk away from things it'll cause you to leave people it'll cause you to change your whole life just to get more of whatever you felt does anybody know what I'm saying today hallelujah Whew, hallelujah I ain't getting much help today but that's all right I'll preach it anyway hallelujah I know how to preach to the to the couch and the dogs and the pillars and the, I know how to get in the shower and preach to the shampoo bottle hallelujah when you when there's a preacher in there you just got to preach hallelujah this morning I just got to preach Woo, hallelujah but as Elisha is chasing after Elijah and watching his life and, and the power that he's walking in and he's beginning to see the miracles and he sees the signs and the wonders hallelujah it's revealed to Elisha and it's revealed to the other prophets that are around that Elijah is going to be leaving Elisha. He's going to be taken up into the heavens and translated from the earth into the heavens by God. So we see this in 2 Kings chapter 2. It says this, verse 6, And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here. This is Elijah talking to Elisha. For the Lord sent me to Jordan. And he said, this is Elisha talking back to Elijah. He said, as the Lord lives and as thy soul lives, I will not leave you. 
And they too went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, wrapped it together. Hallelujah. So sort of just took his mantle it up hallelujah and then the bible says that he took his mantle wrapped it together and he smote the waters hallelujah with that mantle and it says they were divided hither and thither so that they too went over on dry ground hallelujah and it came to pass when they were gone over that elijah said unto elisha what shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? Watch what Elisha requested. Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Basically, what Elisha was saying was, hallelujah, I, before you leave or when you leave, I want you to give me, leave for me, uh, a, a, a double portion of your spirit or a double portion of the anointing and the power that I've watched operate on your life. In other words, Elijah was saying, when you leave Elijah, hallelujah, I want, oper I want operating in my life what I have seen operate in your life. God Almighty. So here was the instructions, and here's what happened. So, Second Kings, uh, chapter two, skipping down to verse ten, he said, "Well, you've asked a hard thing. <laughs> Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, come on, Hallelujah, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, if if you don't stick with me, if you don't keep chasing me, come on, Hallelujah, if you don't keep coming after me, if you fall away by the wayside somewhere, if you get sleepy and tired and decide that you're going to go to sleep and you're not going to focus, if you're not going to pay attention, and 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 I get up because I'm not. I told some of y'all said you're dragging, but I ain't dragging nobody. Elijah said I ain't dragging you, Elisha. If you don't wake up when I wake up, if you don't move when I move, I'm not coming after you. But if you will be there when I'm taken away, if you'll keep coming after me. Look at somebody say, you got to keep coming after him. Come on, help me, church. Come on, church. Help me this morning. Look at somebody and say, keep coming after him. Come on, thank you. Hallelujah. Good Lord, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, it's Pentecost Sunday. I, got, I need some Holy Ghost filled believers in this house to wake up and help me preach this morning. It came to pass as they still went on and talked, watch this, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. He must have been there. Amen. Hallelujah. He must have kept on pursuing him. Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces because that was in the Jewish culture a way to show mourning. He was mourning the loss of Elijah. He loved Elijah. That was his spiritual father. That was his mentor, his pastor. He rent his clothes. He was mourning in two pieces. Hallelujah. He, he, and, and it says he took up also the what the mantle of elijah that fell from him does everybody see that hallelujah and so when elijah was taking taken away and he was sent up into the into the clouds by the by the whirlwind uh, the bible lets us know that the mantle what mantle the same mantle that represented the anointing and the office of the prophet that came on elisha when he was plowing in the fields that totally interrupted his life, disrupted his course, stopped everything he was doing, shifted his mind, and made him stop everything, leave his family, leave his work, leave everything he knew, and go after the prophet. That mantle fell. <laughs> it, 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 I guess it's going to be my mantle today. It fell. 
And the Bible says that he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan, right? And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and what did he do? He smote the waters. He did the same thing that Elijah did. Hallelujah. And said not where is Elijah Elijah. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Because I, I wasn't after Elijah anyway. I was after that power. I was after that anointing. I was after that glory. I don't know what you're after today. You better not be after Sean Campbell. You better be after the anointing and the power of God. Because Sean Campbell can fall. Sean Campbell can quit. But the Holy Ghost... Hey, oh God, he, he's the same yesterday, today, forever, and he smote that water. Uh, whew, Jesus. And it says, when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. <laughs> When Elijah smote the waters, they parted hither and thither. And when Elisha picked up the mantle and did the same thing that Elijah did, he got the same results that Elijah got. Why? Because the same power that was on Elijah was on Elisha when he picked up the mantle. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Oh God. Hallelujah. This is a picture, children of God, of the day of Pentecost. Here was the apostles. They were following after Jesus. They had left their fishing boats. They had left their jobs. They had left their families. They had left their homes to go after this man with this awe-inspiring power, with this authority. What manner of man is this that he can speak to the wind and the seas and they obey? What manner of man is this that he can speak Speak to blinded eyes and they'll open. What manner of man is this that he can speak to the deaf and they'll begin to hear and the dumb begin to talk? What manner of man is this? Somebody better help me preach this morning. I, God Almighty, I'm going to preach it whether the devil wants me to do or not. Hallelujah. What manner of man is this that he can interrupt a funeral procession and look at a dead boy in a coffin and say, right up and send him back home with his mother. <laughs> and here they are going after this man, this dead razor, this blind eye opener. Uh, this man that when he walked up into synagogues, uh, the demon possessed cried out and the demons started jumping out of their bodies. Uh, hallelujah. What manner of man is this? Hallelujah. And they begin to follow him and they begin to seek after him and then they realized one day that this man they've been following was going to be taken away from them. At first, they thought maybe it was at the cross when they beat him and, and bloodied him and nailed him there and he gave up the ghost and they took him down and put him in a tomb and they thought maybe that was when he was leaving, but they found out in three days... <laughs> The man that they hung on the cross, the man that they laid in the tomb, showed up to him, hallelujah, and told him to cast their nets on the other side of the boat and they'd catch some fish and they realized that he wasn't dead but he was still alive and in a glorified body, man. But they understood that wasn't it. Uh, but then they found out uh, uh, he's going to leave us. And it was on the Mount of Olives. Can I preach it this morning? Can, can I preach it like I, I feel it? He was, he was on the Mount of Olives. And there was about 500 there gathered together. And he told them, help me, Emma. He said, he told them, he said, uh, here's what I need you to do. He said, I need you to go tarry in Jerusalem. I 
need you to go tarry in Jerusalem because it's expedient for me that I go away. But if I go away, I will not leave you comfortless. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. But I'll send you another comforter. I'll send you another one like me. And so it told him to go tarry in Jerusalem. 500 were there on the Mount of Olives and 500 of them seen him go up into the heavens and he ascended up into the clouds and they were standing there watching him and some angels showed up and said why stand ye here gazing for the same one that went up the same way he went up he's coming back is there anybody believes today uh, that the one that went up uh, is coming back uh, come on I know the church don't preach it anymore but I'm gonna preach it today uh, he is coming back uh, you don't get in love with this world uh, don't get in love with the things of this world uh, baby he's coming back uh, and we're leaving oh God yeah 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 you can sit down, you can sit down. Thank you for helping me, y'all. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Next time, don't make me yell at you. Hallelujah. God Almighty. And then so he ascended into the heavens. Yeah. He ascended into the heavens. And he left them. Uh, but he told them, I'm sending a promise to you. I'm sending another comforter to you. Oh, hallelujah. 500 saw him leave. Hallelujah. 500 heard him to say, go tarry in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Until this promise comes. Hallelujah. But only 120 ended up in the upper room because not everybody's going to go after the power of God. Not everybody is going to go after what you and I are going after this morning. Look around you. Hallelujah. Half of these seats are empty. Why? Because not everybody is going after the Holy Ghost. Not everybody is going after the anointing. 120 ended up in that upper room. Whew. Jesus ascended. Jesus left them. Hallelujah. And <laughs> the power went with him. No. Because just a few days later, they were gathered together in one accord in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Yeah, yeah. I said on the day of Pentecost. And when that day had fully come, when the sun had rose up, they were gathered together there, waiting on this promise, waiting on this thing that Jesus said he was going to send. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, there was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. Hallelujah. And something filled that house. And they began to look around. And every one of them began to see an open vision of tongues that was set on fire. And here come those tongues set on fire. And they were floating around in the atmosphere. And all of a sudden, a tongue set on Peter. And he began to speak in an unknown language. And one set on John. And he began to speak in an unknown language and for all you Catholics out there one of them said on Sister Mary hallelujah as she began to speak in an unknown tongue come on somebody Jesus didn't leave with the power baby on the day of Pentecost the mantle fell is anybody glad that the mantle fell oh Jesus yeah Look at somebody say the mantle fell. 
the mantle, the Holy Ghost, the same anointing, the same power that was on Jesus came on the apostles. They stumbled out of the upper room and what did they do? They did what they saw Jesus do. And guess what happened? They got the same results. Blinded eyes were open. Deaf ears were open. The dead was raised. Somebody better praise him on Pentecost Sunday cause the mantle has fell. Somebody shout the mantle has fell. The mantle fell. Today, I know Easter, we celebrated the resurrection. But 50 days later, that's what Pentecost means, 50. It's a, Pentecost was not a Jewish term, it's the Greek term. For 50 days after Passover, 50 days after Passover, we celebrate what his resurrection made a way for. His resurrection made a way for the mantle that was on his life the Holy Ghost that was on his life the anointing that was on Jesus' life to fall <laughs> on the church and now the same anointing the same power the same Holy Ghost that Jesus walked in we didn't get some watered down version of the anointing of Jesus. We didn't get the third cousin of Jesus. We didn't get the stepson of God, the, the, the half brother of the Holy Ghost. We, we didn't get some limited version or some, some watered down measure. No, the same power, the same anointing that Jesus walked around with and healed all of those that were oppressed of the enemy is the same anointing that fell on Pentecost it's the same anointing that's in this house it's the same anointing that'll drive every devil out it's the same anointing that'll heal your body and free your mind God Almighty yeah. Oh, God, I could preach all day. Hallelujah. On this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Yeah. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Because we must understand that Jesus didn't operate out of his deity. In other words, he didn't operate the way he operated because he was Jesus. Right? He operated the way he operated because he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus, when he came to this earth, he laid aside his majesty. Can I just teach this just for a moment? He laid aside his majesty. And he left the splendor of heaven. And he came down and went through the matrix of a virgin's womb. And he come into this earth with flesh. He was the son of God, but he was also the son of man. And he dawned sinful wicked poor wretched flesh and he walked this earth and he was nothing to look at he wasn't beautiful he was average as they come it looked like every other normal man but he did this to show us that the power of God, the glory of God, doesn't rest in man. It doesn't rest in the flesh. The flesh is just a vessel. The flesh is just a tool. But the 
power resides in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And he said, I'm going to show you what man can do who is anointed. I'm going to show you what man can accomplish who has the power of the Holy Ghost resting on his life. And he never cast out a devil, never preached a sermon, never opened a blinded eye until at about 30 years old, he identified with us and he went to a muddy Jordan, submitted himself to the Baptist, Mr. John, hallelujah. And Mr. John dumped him under the water, God Almighty. And him back up and he'd come out of that water walk to the bank of the shore or that river and John witnessed an audible voice that day as the heavens opened up and the father said this is my son and whom I'm well pleased and then a dove descended from a heaven which was the Holy Ghost and lighted on his shoulder uh, and let everyone know that this man called Jesus he's now anointed uh, and his first miracle he turned water into wine uh, but after that baby uh, he began to cast out devils uh, he began to heal the sick uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and I'm here to tell you today uh, on Pentecost Sunday uh, the dove uh, that mantle uh, has come down uh, and the church has the power that Jesus, come on, I need a church today in 2022 to realize the same power on Jesus. It's the same power on us. He said, okay, Holy Ghost, here, here we go. He said, these works that I do, well, Stephen, shall you do and greater. Why? Because I go to the Father. Can I just talk about it a minute? This wasn't in my notes, but, but I'm just going to preach it anyway. Hallelujah. Because I go to the Father. You'll do what I do because I go to the Father. What does that mean? Why, why do you got to go to the Father? Because he said, if I go not away, the Holy Ghost, the anointing that is giving me this power, cannot come but if I go away then he can come but why can't you stay and he come right why can't you stay and he come because Jesus had to accomplish something Adam had separated us from the glory the power and the presence of God <laughs> but Jesus said I've got to go fix some things in Hebrews chapter 9 said he took the blood not of rams not of bulls not of bullocks but his own precious blood and he went into the heavens and he walked down the corridors of heaven and he began to sprinkle everything that Adam had messed up everything Adam had defiled oh and then he got to the mercy seat and he took the drops of his blood and he put it on the mercy seat and then he looked at the father and said father now because of the blood they're clean enough that you can send your spirit somebody better thank him for the blood this morning <laughs> the blood sprinkled on the mercy seat 
cleansed every sin of mankind and made a way that the Holy Ghost who couldn't dwell in an unclean temple now can dwell in this temple because it's been cleansed by the blood. Whew, you may, may be seated. Hallelujah. <sighs> now the same power that operated in Jesus' life. This power is operating in us, on us, through us. This is the message of Pentecost. I'm so tired of people splitting hairs and arguing over the tongues. I'm fed up with it. I'm tired of it. Sometimes, can I be transparent? Sometimes Sean wants to slap people. But the Holy Ghost says, nope, you can't slap them. It's one time, Holy Ghost, let me slap. No, you can't slap them. I'm so tired of people limiting my Holy Ghost to a tongue. I'm so tired of people arguing over the tongue. This thing is more than a tongue. I thank God for the tongues, and I'll talk about the tongues in a minute because I believe it's important. But this power ain't just about a language. It's about running the devil out of your life. It's about healing. It's about miracles. It's about breaking chains. The message of Pentecost is not just about a tongue. It's about the church rising up and doing what Jesus did because we got the same power that he has. But this is what the Lord wants me to tell you. Obviously, he wanted me to tell you those other things. But he said this to me. He said, Sean, the mantle fell the day of Pentecost. But it has to be picked up. Elisha had to pick up the mantle. In order for the power to be transferred... In order for the power to begin to operate in Elisha's life, Elisha had to pick up the mantle. He had to pick up the mantle. He had to use the mantle. He had to do with the mantle what he saw his pastor do with the mantle. Whew. My word to you today, my message, my sermon, whatever you want to call it, just don't call it a talk because we ain't talking in here. We're preaching. <laughs> you'll never see me setting. You'll never see me in skinny jeans. I know that. Hallelujah. But you'll, ne <laughs> you'll never see me sitting on a stool talking to you like you're at story time. I'm not here to tell stories. I'm here to preach in the office of the preacher, in the office of the prophet. I'm here to stand in an anointed office and give you a word that hopefully shakes you to the very core. And my sermon today, my preaching today is to let you know that the mantle of Pentecost has to be picked up in this last day. If you believe it, give him a shout of praise. Look at somebody and say, pick up the mantle of Pentecost. Look at what Jesus told them right before he saw them, or right before they saw him ascend. Look what he says in Acts 1 and 4. Watch what he says. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Does everybody see that? 
don't leave Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith he you have heard of me for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence right before Jesus ascended I want you to get this important truth right before Jesus ascended the last thing he told them was not to go into all the world now prior to this he told him to go but right before he left miss z he said don't you go anywhere <laughs> hallelujah don't you go anywhere stay in jerusalem why because before they could go they had to pick up the mantle they had to pick up the mantle of Pentecost or in other words they had to be and here's where here's where I'm ready to fight every devil I'm ready or in other words they had to be baptized in the Holy Ghost can I preach to you what Jesus preached hey before you preach before you lay hands on somebody before you take an office and call yourself a pastor a missionary an evangelist you got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost don't you leave Jerusalem until you're baptized in the Holy Ghost now there we go hallelujah you 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 are not authorized to speak into my life you are not authorized to pour into me you are not authorized to mentor or cancel my family unless you are baptized in the Holy Ghost and this ain't a denominational thing it's a Bible thing my Jesus said don't you go nowhere until you get baptized in the Holy Ghost don't you start a church don't you lead a ministry don't you start a Bible study until you're filled with come on somebody I need some Holy Ghost filled people to help me in this house. The problem with the church today is nobody's authorized. We're authorized by ministry. We're authorized by some denomination. But there ain't nobody authorized by the Holy Ghost to stand in the pulpit. I need some Holy Ghost filled men and women of God to return. This church generation needs it. This generation needs men and women to stand in these pulpits having been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because that's the way that I pick up the mantle that Jesus walked in. Jesus. He said, don't you go nowhere until you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Picking up the mantle, you may be seeing it. It's the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again. Picking up the mantle is the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Whew, Jesus. Can I preach it? Hallelujah. I know I only got a few minutes to go here, but please help me. Listen to me. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is a separate work of the Holy Spirit after salvation. All the apostles were saved before they went into the upper room. They all believed in the death and resurrection of Jesus. They all believed that he was Lord. 
Doubting Thomas touched his scars and said, you're Lord, you're the Lord. Peter, by revelation, said, you're the son of the living God. You're the Christ. They were saved. They believed. But it wasn't until they went into the upper room that they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is the picking up of the mantle. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's a separate work of the Holy Spirit after salvation. At salvation, the Holy Spirit comes in and makes you a new creature. But when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's when the supernatural power of God can begin to work out of you. Whew. He told him in Luke 24 and 49, Behold, I send you the promise of my Father. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The word endued means furnished or equipped. Like if you was furnishing or equipping somebody for a mission. And the word power is the Greek word dunamis, which means strength or might. When you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you become furnished or equipped with supernatural might or strength. I said it earlier and I'm going to say it again. The baptism is not just about speaking in tongues. It's about being equipped to do supernatural feats. Many of you that are in this house, you were saved for years before I came along. But you never operated in anything supernatural until you got baptized in the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's the door into miracles. It's the door into the supernatural power of God. It's the door into revelation. It's the door into prophecy. It's the door into the gifts. It's the door into the preaching gift. It's the door into the office of the, the apostle, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist. Hallelujah. It's the doorway into seeing revival break out. There's a drink of the spirit that will make the Holy Ghost a well springing up in you, producing eternal life in you. But then there's another drink, John chapter 7, that will make it a river flowing out of your belly. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but we need to hear it again. Because some of you are getting attacked on the Holy Ghost. You're getting attacked on the baptism. Well, I'm going to strengthen your legs today. Those of you that's been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you've picked up the mantle. But now let me talk about tongues. Because what is... The biblical evidence that I have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and I've picked up the mantle of Pentecost. It's the tongues. <coughs> Acts chapter 2. They spoke with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 10. When Peter went to Cornelius' house and began to preach the gospel, Peter and the other Jews didn't know if the gift of the Holy Ghost like they received in the upper room was for the Gentiles. Cornelius was an Italian man. He had Gentiles, Italians. He had non-Jews in his house. And they didn't know if this thing was for the Jews because Jesus told them just to go to the house of Israel. But the Holy Ghost showed up to Peter on the rooftop and told him, what I have cleansed, don't you call unclean. And the Holy Ghost sent him to this Gentile's house and all them Gentile people were there in the house and Peter began to preach and as he began to preach, the same thing that fell on the day of Pentecost fell in Cornelius' house and all of those Gentiles began to speak in other tongues. And it was the tongues that let Peter know the gift of the Holy Ghost is not just for the Jews, it's for the whole world. That's one for the tongue talkers. Come on, tongue talkers. I just gave you some help. Hallelujah. It was the tongues that let Peter know that the blood wasn't just shed for Israel. It was shed for the whole wide world. And I don't care where you're from, what color you are, what race you are. There's a Holy Ghost that will baptize.
baptize you and give you another language than your own. It was uh, the tongues that was the sign to Peter that these people in Cornelius' house has picked up the mantle. In Acts chapter 19, the believers in Ephesus, when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Acts chapter 8, it doesn't say they spoke in tongues, but it does say when Peter and John laid hands on them to be filled with the Holy Ghost, something happened in the physical that caused the local sorcerer to want to pay money to have the power that whoever he laid hands on would receive the Holy Ghost. And what happened? I guarantee you. They begin to speak in tongues and fall out on the floor shaking. In Acts chapter 9, Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't say he spoke in tongues, but I guarantee you that's when he began because in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Where do you think it began? When he got filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe that the devil Taj wants to confuse the church about tongues get us to fight about tongues get us to argue about tongues get us to believe that tongues died with the apostles or we don't need the tongues now that the Bible has come which is a heresy and a false doctrine why because of the benefits of tongues and because it's the initial sign that the church has picked up the mantle the devil doesn't want us picked Picking up the mantle. Because those of you that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you've picked up the mantle. But what does the devil do? He says, You're not anointed. You can't sing that song, you can't preach. But what can you do? You can say, oh, I've picked up the mantle. What do you mean you picked up the mantle? And you can say, Shanda boko yandele bo sataya broko That's what I mean, I picked up the mantle. I've been baptized in the Holy, come on somebody. I picked up the mantle when I was 14 years old. My mama picked it up when she was a teenager. My grandma picked it up in the 1930s. And we've been swinging this thing ever since has anybody picked up the mantle today let the devil know I picked it up I don't question I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost why because I've heard that supernatural language come out of my mouth Every time I speak in tongues, every time I pray in tongues, every time I praise in tongues, it reminds me I'm carrying the mantle. Come on, somebody. I'm about done. I promise. I miss my drummer today. Don't tell him that because he'll get a big head, but much that's all right you can tell him because I, 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 I know how to bust his head hallelujah <laughs> much of the church and I'm done much of the church is trying to operate without picking up the mantle huh a picture of the modern church today is not Elisha with the mantle parting Jordan but it's Elisha without the mantle standing at Jordan saying well I guess the power left with Elijah <laughs> come on the modern church today is Elisha standing at Jordan without the mantle saying I I guess it left with the apostles picture of the modern church today is Elisha standing at Jordan without the mantle saying well maybe it's not God's will for me to cross the water 
Because if it was, it would just part. <laughs> or I know the modern church is Elisha standing at Jordan saying, you know, I need to swim across it because God wants to strengthen me through this <laughs> whew, through this struggle. And you know, if I drowned in it, then it was probably just his will to take me on. <laughs> Or it's Elisha standing at the Jordan with no mantle saying, I know, because this is the modern church, I know I'm supposed to cross it in a boat like the rest of the world does. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to do it like the rest of the world. So if you come up to the average pastor, in the church today with a sickness in your body the first thing he'll say is have you seen the doctor do you have a doctor let me tell you about my doctor he's pretty good I got his card right here he takes all kinds of insurance huh what the modern church is today is standing at Jordan without the mantle Preaching you some kind of message from psychology. Some kind of self-help principles. That if you'll apply it out of your own strength and out of your own, it'll help you live a better life. <laughs> it's the church quoting more, more quotes from somebody's book than the Bible. It's the church doing it like the world. God, but this is the last thing I'm going to say is this before we leave out of here. And I hope you haven't lost your praise. I hope you got one last praise to give the Lord because what the world needs to see is not another powerless, weak Christian without a mantle. Oh God, can I say that one more time? That what the world needs to see, what Chiefland needs to see, what the school system needs to see, what your co-workers need to see, is not another powerless, weak Christian standing at Jordan without a mantle, looking for a boat, or turning around and going the other way, or trying to swim just to get drowned and carried away by the current. No, what they need to see is somebody that's picked up the mantle of Pentecost that's been baptized in the old fashioned Holy Ghost and has got the tongues in their life as a sign revealing to them that there's a God that can still part waters and dry up the ground. Does anybody believe it's time to pick up? Come on, get on your feet today. It's time to pick up the mantle of Pentecost. What your family needs to see, what your friends need to see, what this city needs to see is that there is somebody that's picked up the mantle that's been baptized in the Holy Ghost. The evidence of speaking in tongues who's walked into the door of the supernatural and who now will do what they saw Jesus do and get the results they saw Jesus get. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They need to see somebody strike the water. <laughs> they need to see somebody again lay hands on the sick. 
and see them recover. Yeah. They need to see devils coming out. Yeah. <sighs> Hope Church, when I got here, I got here with the mantle. Yeah. You know what I did? I come in this place. <sighs> I dropped it. And a lot of religious folk, a lot of those religious spirits went. <laughs> Some of them went. And I'm not trying to make fun. I'm just trying to be real. You know, Amber quoted me in her yearbook. You know what her quote was? I dropped my care box and stepped on it. <laughs> yeah. But some, only a few, <sighs> picked it up. Wrapped it together and said, show me the Jordan. Show me the Jordan. Where's it at? Where's that Jordan? Show me that devil. Show me that cancer. Come on, show me that person that's bound up. Show it to me. Show it to me. Give it, get it to me. Get it to me. So, some of y'all had to grab by the back of the shirt and say, calm down. You ain't ready yet. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to walk. But some of you said, let me out of you like Scrappy on Scooby-Doo. Let me out of him. I'll pulverize him. I'll, I'll show him what I got. Is there anybody in this house that's picked up the mantle? Come on on this Sunday morning. I said this Friday every generation drops a mantle some drop the mantle of business some drop the mantle of you know the talent to work on cars some drop the mantle of the talent to you know, be creative and sew things and make things. Some drop the mantle of, you know, I don't know, some drop the mantle of, of, of motherhood on people. I, <sighs> and I keep saying this, but I'm going to say it. I don't care what you think. And I've never thought about it. I've never focused on it. Austin until I've come to this church and it took me back to my roots and it got me in touch with my roots but I praise God my grandmother went to a prayer meeting in the hills of Kentucky because there was no local churches that she could walk to because that's how they went to church with lanterns walking in the mud in the rain because they didn't have cars they weren't they were too poor to take cars they rode horses and mules where they went and I am so glad that my grandma went to a prayer meeting in the hills of Kentucky knelt down at a cane bottom chair and picked up the mantle of Pentecost Her Methodist mother, when she got home, said, Lillian, that was my grandmother's name, Lillian has lost her mind. She's crazy. She went down to the one of them, the one of them prayer meetings there, where they where they put that 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 weird uh, uh, magic dust on you. That's what they used to say. They put that dust on them and make them run around like chickens and shake their heads and fall on the floor. Don't go down to one of those churches. That's what they said. Don't go down to one of them churches. That her Methodist mama says she went down to one of them places and got that, that and she has lost her mind and my grandmother said yes mama I've lost my mind. I've lost my natural mind and I've got a hold of my mind of Christ. <laughs> 
But when my mom and her brothers and siblings were born and raised into that Holy Ghost filled house, my grandma and my grandpa dropped the mantle on them. Thank God my mama picked it up, started preaching the gospel at 17. She wasn't invited into a lot of churches because women were supposed to be silent, but she had revivals anyway. She had meetings that lasted for five and six weeks. Alcoholics, drunks, prostitutes, hallelujah, were saved. Men and women were healed. And then here come along in her 30s. My daddy didn't want another child. He was already in his 50s. He had already been married twice. He had already had grown kids. But mama said, I got to have another child. I want to have a child. I want to have a baby before I get too old. And dad said, all right. And here come this 10 pound, 22 inch, big footed, big headed baby. Hallelujah. Out of my mama. And she took me to church and took me to the Pentecostal houses and the mantle fell and I picked it up. I stood. I'm just going to preach it. I don't care. I got you standing. Hallelujah. You can go home if you want to. Hallelujah. I don't care. Hallelujah. And I'm done caring about who gets ran off or who gets mad or, or who doesn't stay. I'm going to preach it. Hallelujah. And if you want your life to be changed, hallelujah, then you'll grab a hold of what's being preached in this house. And I come down here to Florida and I stood on a football field in the middle of July heat preaching until I thought I was going to pass out because of the heat. I wasn't used to it being from Ohio and I'm preaching and the sweat's dripping off of me and all of a sudden we come down on the middle of that football field and there's every denomination lined up in front of me. Four to five hundred people lined up on that football field, many of which came out of the Baptist church. And guess what we did in 2009 in Dixie County on that football field? Hallelujah. Before I even moved down here, we dropped the mantle. I had Baptist people coming up to me and saying, now what do I do? What do you mean? Well, I got filled with the Holy Ghost tonight and I'm talking in tongues and I, I go down to the Baptist church. I said, well, I guess you're going to have to go back to your Baptist church speaking in tongues or find another church. I don't know what to tell you, but somebody picked up the mantle. Then the Lord said in 2010, Sean, I want you to leave everything in Ohio. I want you to leave your church, leave your house, leave your family, move your family, leave, leave, leave your immediate family, or, or your, your, your cousins and your mom and all of them, and take your family and move down here to Florida, and I want you to go into Old Town, and I want you to drop the mantle. I know I got you standing. I ain't done yet, so just hang out with me. We went into that church in Old Town, and in three years, people that came into that place, every one of them that come through that house, they came out of the Baptist. They came out of the Methodist. They came out of all the denominations. Only a few of them were Pentecost. And we dropped the mantle in that place. And every one of them picked it up and were baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Fast forward. I was burnt out. I didn't want to pastor no more. I said, I ain't going to pastor no more. I'll preach, Lord, but I ain't pastor no more. I'm not completely done, but I'll pastor. I'm not pastor anymore. I'm done with that. <laughs> and I went back to a secular job. And I was living life and loving it. Didn't have no, none of this stress on me. None of this, no, no leadership. I, I didn't have to worry about people and all of that stuff. It was great. And 
I'm pastoring again today not because I wanted to deal with people. As wonderful as you all are, you're not the reason I came back. Because when I wasn't pastoring, Miss Natty, Mr. Manny, when I wasn't pastoring, the Lord spoke to me and said, Sean, you're still carrying that mantle. <laughs> I said, yeah, Lord. And he kept talking to me. And it didn't happen overnight, but over the course of months and months and months, the Lord spoke to me. And he kept coming to me and saying, Sean, you still have that mantle. What about that mantle, Sean? Oh, I don't want nothing to do with that mantle. Sean, that mantle. Sean, that mantle. Oh, God, no. And then he'd open up a door for me to go do a revival or preach a service. And that mantle would come out. And I, the anointing would get. And, and the Lord said, see, that mantle's still there. And then one day, he finally broke me down. He wore me down. And I said, all right, God. I realize I still got this mantle. This mantle of Pentecost. Grandma picked it up. She dropped it on my mom. My mom picked it up. She dropped it on me. I've been carrying this thing around since I was, uh, uh, since I come out of the womb, since a teenager. All right, God, I still got this mantle of Pentecost on me. What do you want me to do? I'm broke down now. God, wherever you open the door. And then this. Baptist man <laughs> called me and said I want you to come I don't care if you've heard this or not I'm telling it again he called me Baptist church Baptist name over the door Baptist name registered with the state on the charter <laughs> we want you to come and preach Our people are asleep and they need to be woke up. <laughs> and I looked at God and God looked at me and he sort of did that thing where it's like. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord. Lisa said, you can't go to that church. It won't work. I said, what if it does work? Oh, it won't work. <laughs> and I looked at God, and God looked at me, and he did that thing again. He was like. <laughs> and God said, Sean, you've dropped that mantle on the football field. You've dropped it in revivals in Kentucky and in different states. And you dropped it. You dropped it. And you dropped it in Pentecostal churches. And you've dropped it in Pentecostal meetings. You've dropped it in Pentecostal revivals. You've dropped it. You've dropped it and drug addicts got filled with the Holy Ghost. You've dropped it and prostitutes come out of their prostitution and gave their heart to the Lord. You've dropped it. You've dropped it on prisoners. You've dropped it on people bound up. You've dropped it on the young. You've you dropped it. I, I dropped it when I dropped it in a church of God in Kentucky and, and, and the youth who numbered 40 got filled with the Holy Ghost in the revival. Every one of them got baptized in the, in the Holy Ghost. He said, you've dropped it in Pentecostal churches. You've dropped it in revivals. You've dropped it on the football field. You've dropped it in the backyard of somebody's house. But now, Sean, I want you to take this thing down to this Baptist church because there's some hungry folks that are I'm getting ready to change their life and I want you to drop the mantle of Pentecost in that Baptist church and when I did baby revival hit this house how many believes revival is in this house <laughs> Abby picked it up Taj picked it up. Some that ain't even here now picked it up. All of the youth in this house has picked it up. I 
I refuse to pastor church without a mantle. This will be a church with a mantle. This will be a church that does the works of Jesus. This will be a church that runs devils out. Lift your hands in this place. I'll play around on 